How we doing guys? A uh, cheeky little vlog. Incidentally, um, just been talking to uh, someone who's told me that Deputy Governor at Forest Bank, private jail, went a couple of weeks ago and the number one governor has now been sacked. A few number one governors should be sacked really, some of the state of prisons, what's happening in them prisons and the like. So, uh, Forest Bank vlog coming up. Not now. Stephen? Stephen? Get your ass back over here, get your ball and lay down. It's too warm, lad. Just there. Good boy. So, the best and the worst. Uh, in one day this was, uh, on the healthcare at Strange Ways. I've talked about a lad uh, many times, but not. Not the end of the story, I don't believe so. We had a lad. Um, it was a nice lad, very pleasant. Uh, been to prison a few times. He was, he'd, he'd crossed the board between mental health and mental illness, definitely. Um, you know, since a teenager. In and out of friends at units, been sectioned, uh, on meds most of his life. Had a very good understanding of medication what worked for him, what didn't. So he ended up in front of a psychiatrist. Um, he was a standing psychiatrist. He weren't our, our regular at Strange Ways. At, at one bit, we didn't have one. So they're like a locum, I guess. They come in, you know, do a bit of work. This guy's got this lad in front of him with my manager, Bradders. He, uh, he basically weren't happy with the medication he was on the psychiatrist, not the patient, the lad, and said he was going to change it. The lad said, please don't change it. I'm happy. I'm settled. And he was, you know, I liked him, me, on association when all the prisoners were out on healthcare, the patients, happy to call them patients. Many of them were really ill. Uh, you know, he could play pool. He was very kind with the other prisoners, had time for him. Um, but in his life, he, he had long periods have been incredibly unwell anyway the psychiatrist decided he was changing the meds he argued with him he said he did say quite clear to the psychiatrist if you change my meds i will refuse to take them and at some point you will be taking me to hospital mental hospital forensic unit whatever he changed his meds he stopped taking them 10 days it was I have told plenty of people this story, but I will tell you now, that just shows you how incredibly unwell some people are. 10 days of not taking medication. He went from, you know, <coughs> pleasant young man, playing pool, chatting, time for other people, to day 10, stood naked in his cell, covered in excrement, uh, shite whatever you want to call it rubbing it in his ears his eyes uh trying to pull his own manhood off um trying to insert things in himself uh various um various things going on stay there stevie good boy various things going on it, it wasn't pleasant um we the last couple of days tried to give him diazepam um, to calm him down, he wouldn't take any medication. Going in his cell the last couple of days to try and give him medication, uh, his level of agitation was off the scale. Um, he wasn't particularly trying to harm anyone, but people become um, can become incredibly violent and destructive. Um, bearing at this mind, he's probably not eaten for 10 days and taking very little fluid white mouth, lips, um, dehydrated, becomes very, very dangerous. Anyway, thankfully, this day he is going to hospital. The nurses have been doing the paperwork. He's going on an emergency section. Um, we had a team of lads come on. I'll talk about them after, you know, because, you know, that, that is probably the, the shining light that day. So. We've got to a point now where this lad is going to be going in about an hour's time, maybe less. Um, we've got a vehicle brought up to 
transport vehicle brought up to the healthcare. So literally, you know, he's got to go down a couple of flights of stairs and he's on a van and he's off to hospital, thankfully. We've already got a team there, the escort team, like I said. Then we get a PO come on. Just for those of you that might not know, in the UK prison service, you have a prison officer, like myself. Next level is a senior officer, wing manager. And then you get a principal officer, a PO. The PO has come to discharge you. Normally, normally discharging a prisoner, they would sit down with a prisoner, uh, read them the license conditions and the like, sign the paperwork and away you go. Obviously, this lad had no capacity, so it was a formality, really. However, he came up the PO with a security uh, senior officer, alas. So he goes to the cell. My manager is there. She's a mental health nurse when she finished of some 40 years. Um, fantastic mental health nurse and obviously full of empathy and understanding. We've seen this lad in 10 days go from, you know, bright, happy lad to incredibly unwell. So the PO goes to the cell and says something, uh, something like, uh, Oi, retard, or is this the retard that's going to hospital? Back of the cell, lad, back of the cell. Turns round, um, Stevie, come here. Turns round, um, says to the lad who was in charge of the team, I want him fucking smashing with the shield. What he meant was, um, the lads were gonna be in full PPE, right gear, and white overalls over the top because of the excrement and the like. Um, he, he wanted him smashing and handcuffing. Yeah. So my manager challenged him straight away. You know, who do you think you are sort of thing? Uh, this lad's incredibly unwell. He started talking over the top of her. It went from naught to heated in about two seconds. Yeah. Now I'm going to support my manager, I've seen this lad. She is a nurse manager, she doesn't work for the prison service. But she, she's my gaffer. Um, very heated, uh, you know, she's, she's standing her ground. Um, he's effing and jeffing. The PO uh, keeps using the word retard, nutcase and things like that. Um, yeah, he, he was said in the most derogatory way as well. Uh, incredibly upsetting, especially when you knew this lad. There was absolutely no need for this whatsoever. He would no need to say anything at all. And um, we'd already spoke with a lad who was going on the escort. Um, you know, we'd had some discussion at length about this lad who was incredibly unwell. The senior officer from security, this last, just stood there looking at me with a smug look on her face a really stupid grin so my manager says sensibly take this off the landing to the office the po's off stomping his way off so this senior officer is looking at me with a stupid smug grin so i, I couldn't help myself I said do you think that's fucking funny so she looked at me you know one of them looks so i said it again do you think that's fucking funny Instant defence, do you know what I mean? I'm not having you talk to me like that. I just put my hand up and walked off. She went with a toss. Heated argument in the office. Basically, my manager told the PO to get off the unit as he wasn't required. Now, it was two or three or four minutes. Might have been five minutes long that. It was not pleasant. My manager got incredibly angry and upset. There were tears after and why wouldn't it be? You know, let's talk about humanity now. Um, anyway, he cleared off the PO with his sidekick. Now, um, let's talk about the positive. So the lad who was leading the escort, I knew him very well. He was a Yorkshireman, he played rugby like myself. Two great qualities right there. Um, he, knew, he knew about this lad, we talked about it. So, the vehicle arrived, um, he briefed the team. I was there, Brad was there, my manager. 
a couple of other healthcare staff and uh, it was very warming to see how they dealt with the guy who was incredibly unwell. You know, he, he panicked, he was scared, he was frightened, he went in the cell, he was naked as well. Um, as little use of force as possible they used. Um, they restrained him, he had to be handcuffed, but it was done in as decent and humane way as possible. Um, and he was put on the transport and off to hospital, thankfully. Um, yeah, you know, when, when, when you look at that, that day, most bad days or horrendous incidents like that are the incidents that come to mind when I think back. But also, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't described the lads who went in to restrain that lad. You know, I didn't describe it. It was done very quickly, you know. Uh, minimum harm to him, minimum force. Um, you know, it, it was done, it was, it, it was, it was done, uh, you, you couldn't vote for it to have been done any better. You know, uh, when he left, my manager were crying, one of the healthcare assistants were crying. Um, and that's how it is, guys, that's mental illness, that, incredibly so. We had a principal officer who, there was no need to be like that, he didn't even need to be there. Uh, the senior officer supporting him, you know, I don't know who she thought she were. Um, so, yeah, definitely, you had probably one of the worst moments, um, especially because how unwell the lad was. And also, um, I'm going to use the word of professionalism, uh, complete professionalism from the team that were escorting uh, that lad and taking him to hospital. So there you go, guys. Um, Going to leave it at that. Parting shot as always. Uh, thanks for coming. Stevie, you've gone off camera, kid. Come on, come here. There you go, lad all. Huh? Good boy. I'll see there.